Now I have the four sides cut out for the box. That will be the drawer and the actual bed frame, so that will slide out there. So I cut these two sides at 13 and an eighth. Bottom is 13 and 5 eighths. And then you're doing just a bit smaller on these. 11 16 smaller to fit in there. And then that's going to be where everything runs into. I'll probably just screw everything in off the sides and throw some wood glue on it. This will have a face off the back so that, you know, none of this will show. And it'll kind of make it look better just coming out of the back of the van. Now, I'm thinking I'm going to have an inlay so I can actually drop in half inch ply on the top of this. So I have to rabbit these sides out just so that will lay on there flush with a half inch rabbit uh, router bit. And then I'm also probably going to inlay a divider in here. So I got to router out some slats. I think I'm going to do, going to do on both sides and then I'll be able to slide in the actual piece into there. It'll kind of keep it better in place. And then I'll tie in from the bottom with screws into those sides with screws and glue. It's just kind of an added protection as far as having that move around or anything because there might be something kicking up against it. So over time that might wear that away if you don't have those little channels cut into that to hold that in place. So now I'm going to go from this back edge here up to cut my channel. So I marked that at 26 inches. Cut my 3 quarter inch channel on this side. I'm going to do that with the router. So I'm just getting that set up now and then got my other piece marked here so I'll run a straight edge down get my line set up my guide which will be just a level and then I'll rip that over that and I'm gonna go a quarter inch down into that so there'll still be a half inch left as far as support goes okay I've got my guide set up now for the one piece so you just got to figure out the depth from the flat side of your router, in this case right there, to the bit, and run that guide over in that distance, and then we're going to run that flat edge along that edge to get that groove cut out. And remember, you're cutting out on this side, so make sure you mark that. And instead of going quarter inch, I went 3 16ths inch on the depth. So just keep that in mind because you're going to have to cut your board width to fit in the middle of these two, that extra 3 eighths inch there. Now I've got to cut this divider piece down. So you want to take the 3 16 on each side so that'll be 3 8 inch total wider than your front face piece and that should slide right in there okay now I just dry fit everything together to make sure everything fits before we start gluing and screwing everything in now I need to go around with a rabbiting bit on the router and take off it's a quarter inch in and then a half inch down and that's what that'll look like. The bearing will run on the bottom part so it'll keep it flush and then that's a half inch depth so the piece of wood will fall and lie flush with this. Now if you're an idiot like me and should have done that before you did these grooves, I just cut a little slat here and put it in so that that bearing can run along that so I don't dive too deep into this. So I knew right away when I started to do this, it started to tear out really bad. I don't know why I kept on going. I thought I could maybe improve my technique so that it wouldn't tear so bad. But in the end, I ended up just cutting all of this off and having to place an actual top frame piece that would house the wooden inlay tops that would fall flush with the top and I'll show you more on this later. But I actually started by cutting off some of the stray pieces with the razor. 
I went and spent way too much time using a rotary tool to try to smooth it out using sandpaper and different cutting heads, but in the end it was all for naught. So definitely don't do this and I'll show you how to actually put in the inlay that worked out a lot better. So a quick fast forward here, I'm going to do solid wood on the top of the drawer because that plywood just shattered under that router so I think this is going to handle a bit better. So these are one by one strips mitered on the corners so I'll get those glued together and I'll probably throw one brad nail through there but on its own these are usually pretty strong so maybe I'll just clamp those with my corner clamps. And it's just getting laid on the top anyway, so where it'll get nailed down. And so I have to route these inside edges down a half inch by a quarter inch in. For that, I think I'm going to use my routing table just to have a fence. And I think with solid wood, it's just going to go a lot better. So I don't know if there's a different way leave a message in the comments. This is all I can think of. I've been racking my brain on how to fix it all day. All right, so now we're gonna go about getting all these pieces glued up and I'm gonna start with the ends and just kind of apply the glue, get the clamp set up and then I'm gonna pre-drill the holes and I'm going to use these number eight by two inch exterior wood screws. Um, it should give me plenty of pull, and as long as I pre-drill, I shouldn't have to worry about splitting, so definitely want to make sure to do that. So I'm using the, uh, the Type on 3 glue here, so it's like a little bit longer assembly time, so I can kind of get the clamp set up before it sets completely. Now when you're working with plywood veneer like this, it's not going to be totally necessary because of this veneer that's on the outside I'm not really going grain to grain with stuff like this but I just thought it'd give me a little bit extra hold and a little bit better rigidity but I don't think it's completely necessary I just figured it's going to give me the most tightest seal that I can possibly get once I put those screws in so we'll get that going now and kind of show you as you go along where I'm going to place those screws Okay, so I got this side uh, kind of tightened down where it needs to be just to give me a baseline to move off of, got it all flush and lined up. So and I can start down there, get everything lined up and clamp down, and then I can start pre drilling and putting the screws in. Okay, I got both of these sides screwed in. Um, I don't know. I don't know anymore. I'm trying to tie in that bottom to the bottom piece over here, and then getting these three in to the sides to get in there. I mean, it's fairly taut. Not square on the top, is, of course, uh, so we're gonna have to fuck with that. Uh, I just don't even know anymore, guys. I really don't. Uh, it's together. Whatever. Now I'm just going to start going down the sides and try to put one in every, I'm going to do one every eight inches. I'm going to have to kind of press down and in. I just went through and clamped up the bottom so it was flush. Just going through and feeling where it's flush and then clamping it tight so I can get the screw in there. Most important part here is to get in the exact center of that bottom piece of plywood. So I'm just measuring up using a square and making sure I'm not going to blow out either side of that bottom piece and getting adequate 
holding strength from the screws here. Okay, so this side's mostly done, one every eight inches. I'm gonna wait to do these ends when I put the end cap in. So just gonna make sure that this is flush on the bottom again, clamp it down, pre-drill, and put in all the screws. Okay, we're gonna put the end cap on now. Just get that glued and clamped in, screwed in all the way around. the main shell just dropped in the middle piece here got to tie that in to uh, draw that in in the middle there that should help keep it more square and then it'll help fit the top over everything to cover up all this edge here all right that's clamped in place just checked it that it was square or at least close to um, so then we'll just throw a few screws in the side here to tie that in. Okay, I got the middles in, both sides. That's all tied in. So now I'm just gonna go in the bottom of this one, the middle one, and then the end. Now it's time to put on the top piece, which I glued up earlier. And it's got the inlay for the actual panels that will go in there and drop in so I'm just gonna glue this clamp it and then I'm gonna throw one and a quarter inch brad nails into this top piece down and through and then I can fill those holes in with like an epoxy or wood filler so we'll go ahead and do that now I went and sanded down all these top surfaces so hopefully it should fit on a little bit better and it's a little warp down there, but once I clamp it down, it's pretty thin stuff, so it should conform to the curvature of the of the pieces. And I'm just using tight bond three here again, just to give me a little bit longer set time, so I can make sure all of the outside edges line up, and any kind of small warp that the top piece has here, I can get it flush with the outside. And when putting in the brad nails, these are 16 gauge, one and a quarter. Just make sure you're going uh, on a 90 degree and perpendicular to the board to make sure there's no blowout out the side of the drawer. Next I just cut this little slat here. It's going to go over the top of that and lie flush on both sides here. So I can have two panels that lay on top of that and that provides a nice uh, break point for the panel. And then I cut one more piece about a half inch tall 11 16 wide and that pretty much goes on as like a divider so that it falls flush with the two panels once they lay inside there it gives it kind of a stopping point there so get these two things glued and nailed in and then since I did a half it half inch overlay on each side I just marked half inch on each side that's where this should lay in between so you just get those marks lined up. It's hard to see, but get those lined up on both sides. And then you can hit that right down the middle to go in there. I went through, filled in all the nail holes with like an epoxy wood filler and sanded down this whole top so there's no burrs or edges to reach in there. So I think that's pretty much well and done trying to figure out if I should coat the inside with poly or not just to make it a little more durable and more waterproof. Well the drawer slides came today just been trying to figure out how they're gonna lay out on the actual frame here. Um, they seem like pretty good quality they're locking they pull out their uh, 48 inch uh, extension there so I'll link in the description the brand and everything it was about 180 bucks for them about 200 with tax 
seems like it should work pretty well with this setup. They do stick out a little bit, so that was kind of a concern, but after measuring in the van, it seemed like it should be fine. All right, sorry about the sound. It's raining, actually, in August, so pretty fortunate. I'm just trying to dry fit this now. It is super tight. I don't know if because it's so humid that measurement's off or not, or if I just fucked up again. Both are possible. Uh, and it looks way bigger on that side than that side, so I'm hoping once I kind of pinch these in and get that more flush all through there, I'll be able to slide this one in. But I think I might, since with these slides you have to attach to the frame first, and then I'll have the box pulled out, and then you have to attach the box to that outside frame by uh, opening up the slide. And there's access points where you can come into these holes. So I'm having this one just inset. Looks like maybe like a quarter inch, so I just mark that. It's just where this notch just clears that. It's just so in the back of the van. Um, I can utilize as much space as possible without this hitting the door or the paneling on the back door. So I have that pretty much flush with this piece here, and it's still accessible. You can still get it all the way down. So I just made a mark on the inside there to mark where I got to set the slide up. Getting this to all line up is tricky. Um, so what I did was got these two, you know, set into place, the brackets on the inside and pulled out the slides all the way. And then what I had to do since I have no level services is shim this end up because you want that to come up a little bit. And then you can see there's that about quarter inch gap there. There's going to be a quarter inch gap on the bottom. And I just laid it just up on top of here on this bottom support. Shim that up with a couple eighth inch pieces of ply. And it might be a little bit more than that, but it's pretty close. I just wanted to make sure I'd clear the bottom in case there's any variation in these bottom pieces. So now I have this mostly straight, I think. The measurements on either side of this are damn near spot on. So now what I want to do is get these fastened into place at least in the back and where I can access them. So I don't know if I'll be able to access that one. But then what you have to do is actually move back that hole to access those. And then there'll be more in the front here. So I gotta get these clamped into place really well so that I can actually move the slides and then these don't move. What I got to fasten these into place is a quarter inch by one and a quarter inch pan head. And you'll just wanna make sure that once inside that this slide will clear your screw head. And in this case it does. It's got a little bit of a bevel. So as long as I get that in flush, which I'll probably pre-drill it, it should be fine. It should clear even back here where there's no real inset or inlay. I I think as long as I get that in flush, it should be able to clear it, but we'll see. You'll want to actually fit your screws in here and make sure that when you close the whole slide that it, the bevel in the front slide actually clears that screw if it lies flush. And in this case, it does with these. So now I'm going to pre-drill these. I think I'll put one in the back here hole in this one here and then I'll just move on up to that one there's one that's actually being covered here and I believe there's three more up here okay so I'm gonna pre-drill it got a bit slightly smaller than the barrel of the screw and I just marked it 
with masking tape how far I want to go in, which will just be the length minus about an eighth of an inch. Well, that went in pretty flush, so I'm pretty happy with that. So I'll just move on down the line now. Here's where it gets a little bit tricky. I did pre-drill that to just see if I could clear that, but I can't clear it with the head of the screw. So I'm gonna have to come back to the access port. Since I have this back part secure, now I can remove that clamp. I have the two screws in there. There's gonna be one right here, but before I do that, I might move to this access port here. See if I can find my first one down here and get that tied in up front and then just slowly work back. I at least put the uh, the pre-drill hole in there. I just couldn't get it past the screw head. So let me just see how this goes. Yeah, see how I just released it back here and then I was able to move this back slide actually. I didn't need to move this front slide at all. So let me try to get in there and get that screwed in. I'm just trying not to move this because I don't want to get off course with it, I guess. You can just test it by moving that slide back. That clears that screw, so then you move it back to the next one. Or the next one that you want to tie into. Put one more there. And that'll be too solid up front. Then I can probably come back a bit. Whatever, better safe than sorry, I'll just throw one in the front. overkill but I think I might put one more in the back here just to be safe so it'll be one two three four five six seven seven in each side I think that's more than enough but uh, these are rated for I think 250 pounds so I just want to make sure that uh, it's got the proper anchoring to keep everything in place Okay, that side's all mounted and the slide seems to be working okay. It's a, definitely a tight fit right now on the outside, but I'm hoping once I attach that and both sides, the drawer will just slide in with the bearings and some compression with uh, how, how the uh, slides can move. So just move to the other side. I don't think I'll film that. You kind of got the gist of it with that. Just make sure you're moving your slide to get that access port to the proper locations and then I move the back to get those secure then I just move from the front back alright now that we got the base of the slides locked in place we're gonna move on to the actual drawer slide portion these I'm just gonna tie in as many as I can up here I'll probably do that one that one, that one, that one. And then it's the same thing. You gotta find your holes in the access port. I gotta move along those as well. 
And since this is three quarter inch ply, I wanted something a little bit heavier to make sure I could kind of bind in there a bit better. So I did number 14 by three quarter inch. So I think as long as I get good coverage, I think I'm gonna do eight on each side. I think that's what it came out to be in that hidden area. So, so I think you have to tie the front ends first and then you can push the whole drawer back in and then you'll get to these access points here. And so unfortunately my box isn't super square. I'm just getting this leveled on both sides before I start screwing in the sides. That way at least I know it's level from front to back and I have it shimmed up here. I'm just using quite a few different layers, but I just want to get it level with that back piece so once I get these screwed in, it will actually go in straight. Okay, so since this one's super important, I don't go all the way through the inside. Marked it a bit short. Should be fine against cracking, but I just want to make sure. So I'm going to do this front one. This back is actually lined up really well. Good on the inside. Let's see how it goes. Don't fucking pop through, please. That'd be great. So I'm gonna move back to this one here. Not over tighten because you don't want to just strip the whole thing out. Just get it pretty snug. I'm actually going to move to the far rear one. So I can get the baseline set there. There's just enough room for me to get in there. Maybe, I hope. I really fucking hope. Yeah. Feels good. Just barely snuck by. I guess I could have pushed the whole thing back. I gotta get the other side. So now I just moved over to the other side because I wanted to get a good baseline set for the entire drawer so then I could move down and actually attach the interior screws to make sure it was secured. So now what I think I'll do is tie one in here and here. I can always come back to one of those if I need to. I want to make sure I've got enough in here. So now I scooched it back about six inches. I've got another one back here that I'll do. And I'll do that on both sides. And then we'll uh, see when the next one is. Okay, so I went one more back, about six inches or so. Do that one, see where the next set is. And then I can start doing the front because that'll be four. I'll have four more then. So I think that will be adequate to keep everything in tight. It's a tight fit for sure. I'm hoping this humidity is the cause for that. But since there will be usual humidity in the van, um, I guess that's just what it's going to be. Okay, so I'm going to do these two on the slider. I'm going to put one all the way back. Don't think that one's really necessary. It's got quite a bit of support up there and there, so that's what we'll do. So now I pushed it back about four inches, and that's the final hole in the rear. So there's one, two, three more after your first one all the way in the rear, so we'll do that one. All right, now for the moment of truth, does it slide in? Of course I ran into a hiccup here where the drawer wouldn't close all the way because one of the springs that moves the locking mechanism out of the way of the actual slide piece 
was jammed and I needed to do some troubleshooting there. But this is pretty much it for this video. We'll move on to the more finishing side of it for the next one. So make sure to like, subscribe, comment with anything that you guys have questions on, and maybe anything I could do better. Thanks for watching.